this tutorial is going to be well detailed and explanatory and if you want to see how i achieve this look keep on watching so please do not forget to like comment share and subscribe so first and first i used my wipe to clean up the face this would help to remove deaths and oil on the face then i went to hydrate her skin with my green tea spray this would give the skin a little bit of hydration then i dried it up immediately after drying it i'm going to be moisturizing her face with my cetaphil moisturizer so it's important to moisturize your skin generously whether you have oily or dry skin so after moisturizing the face properly the next thing you want to do you want to dry it up make sure every product you apply during skin prep dries up before moving on to the next product next i'm going to be using this kiss beauty primer on her so this face. primer is going to give the makeup a very good base to sit on so after applying the primer next thing is to dry it up using my fan make sure it dries up before moving on to the next product then after which i went ahead with this classic mattifying primer my mother has an oily skin so this mattifying primer is going to help reduce the oil on the face so i'm actually applying it on the oily areas on her face so if you look at the skin properly you'll notice that the places i apply the mattifying primer is already looking matte it doesn't take time to dry after that i'm going to be locking it up with my keys beauty this will help to lock in the skin prep after which i let it absorb into the skin before moving on to foundation for foundation i'm going to be using this avo and decal foundation i mixed the two together then i'm going to be using my flat brush to apply it all over the face before blending so for easy blending after applying the foundation i'm going to be spraying the face after spraying the face i used my damp beauty sponge to blend the foundation into the skin so if you want your foundation to be well blended when you apply it on your skin make sure your beauty sponge is soft and damp if it is soft and damp you don't have to worry in your foundation blending technique so after blending in the foundation i'm going to be locking it up this will help the foundation to stay intact without going anywhere then after that i'm going to be drying it up with my fan after drying it, moving on to cream contour. For cream contour, I'm going to be using this Avo foundation in the shade 035. So whenever you want to contour the face, it's best to use a shade that is two to three shades darker than the skin to contour the face. So this contour is going to help add dimension to the face. So you start by applying it under the cheekbone to carve out the appearance and also on the forehead to make it look smaller. So after that, you're going to be applying it on your jawline to define its shape. So after contouring the face, I'm going to be applying cream blush. I'm going to be using this red shade for my blows and lip palette and apply it above her cheekbone and a little bit on the tip of her nose. Then after that, I'm going to be using my beauty sponge to blend. So when it comes to applying blush, you can use any color of your choice. You can use peach, you can use pink, you can use an orange color, you can use red or purple depending on what you want to create. So after blending in the blush, I'm going to be highlighting her face with my Avo concealer in the shade A30 to highlight her face. So while highlighting the face, a little bit of concealer goes a long way. Don't pack too much concealer. But if at the end of the day you want to apply more concealer, go ahead to apply more concealer. But it's best to start with a little quantity. So after applying the concealer, next thing is to blend the concealer in the highlighted area. So while blending the concealer, try as much as you can not to be too hard on your skin. If you're too hard on the skin, the beauty sponge will take all the concealer and you won't like the outcome. So be gentle while blending and make sure you blend properly before you move to the other side. So if you're a dark skin beauty, try as much as you can to maintain your dark skin color. Don't go ahead applying something that is too light on your face. Make sure everything matches with your skin tone. So after blending the concealer, I'm going to be contouring the nose with the same shade I used in contouring the face. So you start by applying it on the sides of the nose to create a slimmer profile. After that, I'm going to be using my beauty sponge to blend to avoid harsh lines. So after that, I'm going to be setting the concealer with my Merak setting powder in the shade Nutmeg. But before setting, I went back using my beauty sponge to blend the areas underneath the eyes to avoid 
decreasing so after that i'm going to be setting with my concealer i'm going to be using my beauty sponge to take it after taking it i'm going to be dusting it off on the back of my palm before setting so that it won't be too too much do not pack too much setting powder while setting if you do so you end up having cakey outcome so set properly and take it one step at a time So after setting the concealer on the highlighted area, I'm going to be setting the rest of her face with my Royal Makeup Powder Palette. I'm just going to take this shade here to set the rest of the face. So while setting the rest of the face, make sure you use the exact shade of her skin tone to set the rest of the face. Do not use a shade lighter or darker. So after setting the rest of the face, then next is for low light contouring, which is dry contouring. I'm going to be using this dark shade from the same powder palette to set the cream contour I applied earlier. So next I'm going to be applying this light shade on the areas I highlighted just to give it more coverage. So next I'm going to be contouring the nose with these two shades from the same powder palette to enhance the nose. So after that i used my powder brush to blend everything together so after blending it together i'm going to be setting the face this would help to reduce the powder effect and also help the product to sit properly into the skin after that i'm going to be drying it up with my fan before moving on to baking for baking i'm going to be baking with the same setting powder i used in setting the face to bake the face So moving on to the brows, I'm going to be using my spoolie brush to brush her brows first Then I went ahead using my brow tam to lead the brows nicely. So next is to outline her brows, I'm going to be using my carrot gel liner, the brown shade and my angled brush to draw the outline. So while I was drawing the brows, I noticed the brown color wasn't really popping on this dark skin. I had to mix it with the dark shade. So I mixed the brown and the dark shade together a little so that it would pop on this dark skin. So I'm going to be doing the other brows following the same method. So after drying the brows, I'm going to be highlighting it with this same concealer I used in highlighting the face to highlight the brows. So after highlighting it, I'm going to be using my blending brush to blend it immediately so that it doesn't get dry. Uh, so after that, I'm going to be doing the other brows following the same method. So next is to highlight the top of the brows. I usually use the foundation color I use on the face to highlight the top of the brows. Because if you use the same concealer you use underneath the brows to highlight the top of the brows, it would look very light. And if you're not able to blend it well, it won't look nice. So it's best to use the foundation color you use on the face to highlight the top of the brows. With that, it won't really show. So after highlighting next to set the concealer, I'm going to be using this light shade from the same powder palette to set the concealer. So after that, I added a little setting powder on the areas underneath the eyes because I'm about to apply eyeshadow. So for the eyes, for the eyeshadow base, I'm going to be using this black gel liner, carrot gel liner as my eyeshadow base. So I'm just applying it on the lid. So normally I'm supposed to be applying my eyeshadow primer or concealer as my eyeshadow base but I decided to use this gel liner as my eyeshadow base because I want to create a dark eyeshadow on her lid so applying this um, gel liner will help make the dark eyeshadow to pop 
so after applying it i'm going to be blending it with my blending brush so after blending it next i'm going to be applying this dark eyeshadow from my kylie eyeshadow palette i'm going to be using it to set the gel liner i applied on her lid So after that, I'm going to be using this dark brown eyeshadow from the same eyeshadow palette to blend out the eyeshadow. So there won't be any demarcation between the black and the brown eyeshadow. So after that, I went back applying this dark eyeshadow on her lid so that it would pop very well. So next is to define the lid. I'm going to be applying this lighter shade powder on the outer corner of her lid to define the lid. After that, I used my eyeshadow blending brush to blend the in. So next, I'm going to be adding some pigment on her lid. But before that, I'm going to be using my glitter glue. So I'm just going to apply it on the inner corner of her lid. This will help the pigment to stay and not fall. Then I went ahead placing the pigment on her lid. So this is MK Pigment, but I'm going to be leaving the name in my description box. After that, I'm going to be adding this other color to top it up. So after that, I'm going to be using my eyeshadow blending brush to blend to avoid any demarcation. Then I went ahead applying this darker shade from the same eyeshadow palette. I'm just going to apply it on the outer corner of her lid then gently blend it towards the inner corner of her lid. So next is to line her upper and lower lash line. I'm going to be using my carrot gel liner, the black shade, to line her upper and lower lash line. After that, I'm going to be prepping her natural lashes with my Zara mascara in order to give it volume. Moving on to powdery blush, I'm going to be using my Tara blush palette. I'm just going to take this shade here and apply it above her cheekbone and a little bit on the tip of her nose. After that, I'm going to be blending the blush so that it will sit properly into the skin. So next, I'm going to be using that brush I used in contouring the nose. I went back using the brush to contour, like to blend the nose so that everything will look neat and well blended. Then I went ahead wearing her these lashes from Chi Lashes. So next, I'm going to be prepping her lower lashes with my Zara mascara. So moving on to the lip, I'm going to be applying this peach shade from my Blossom Lip Palette. I'm just going to apply it on her lip. After that, I'm going to be using this brown shade to outline the lip. So next, I'm going to be using my brush to blend it together. So next, I added a little bit of this Newborn Beauty lip stain, this nude color. I added a little bit in the middle just to brighten up the lip. After that, I'm going to be blending it. So after that, I'm going to be adding some gloss because I want the lip to be glossy. After that, I'm going to be using my powder brush to blend everything together. So after blending everything together, I'm going to be using this Meva Beauty Glow Highlighter. I'm just going to apply it on the places I want the highlight to pop.
After that, I'm going to be using my powder brush to blend everything together. After that, I'm going to be setting the face with my Kiss Beauty Fix Spray. After setting it, I'm going to let it dry properly into the skin. So we had to change the background. The other side was looking too light. And guys, this is the finished look. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys. Yeah, 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 yeah.